When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Hi, I'm John Mattles. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the um, showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. Today, it's, uh, well, it's a your community day, I think, even though it kind of is an on-the-air, off-the-presses day. we got a very interesting program, an internet journalist who has broken many national stories, including the UVA rape case, the alleged rape case. 436-ME-TV, option 11. We're back with your phone calls in our program in just a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to the program here. Time to do our monologue on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno before we get to the main portion of our program. As usual, my friends, you're watching us on Comcast, Channel 187, 43.6, and now 13.1. And, of course, you can catch the replay of this later today at 2, 13.6, 8 o'clock tonight, 13.5 on Biz uh, TV. And now, hey, yours truly finally got on Twitter thanks to my son. He helped me uh, actually manage the account because I have no idea what I'm doing. You can follow me on Twitter at John Mallows Me TV. Just got on there. Don't have many followers. It takes a while to gain a following. It's kind of like this program, my friends. So bear with me. Uh, if you want to join the program, you can call in at 436 Me TV Option 11, and you can follow me on Twitter. Hey, uh, before we get to the main meat of this, I do want to mention the Janessa. Uh, Ramirez uh, case uh, because this is ongoing. She was shot and killed on Sunday night near a uh, convenience store at uh, Clinton near Marks. A bunch of gang bangers about 300 yards away got into a gunfight. Uh, the stray bullet traveled some 300 yards, hit Janessa in the stomach. She died on the scene in the arms of her mother. Police are asking for your help. If you know anything, call. 498 stop that's the crime stoppers uh, telephone number you can call police directly at 621 2000 there is a reward some oh my goodness twenty two thousand dollars now you don't have to give your name it's uh you can remain anonymous if you'd like police chief jerry dyer certainly was visibly shaken during a news conference the other day i do also want to mention uh that the water issue is coming to a head on February the 5th, and you have until then to get him into City Hall. Hey, you can talk to Mark Standriff if you want. You can call him at 621-8000. Hasn't returned many of our phone calls here at uh, Connect With Me since Thanksgiving. Uh, you can listen to his recording at 621-8618. You can also look at the mailers. If you haven't received one, call City Hall. That's what it looks like. You should have gotten it in the mail over the holidays. You check the box, you sign it, you mail it back by February the 5th. That is a protest card. If you don't want your water rates going up, sign the card, mail it back. They've received more than, I believe, 35,000 at this point. They need 66,000 by February the 5th. Anyway, to our main meat of the program here now, you know, if I mention his name, you may not recognize it, but if I mention many of the stories that he was involved with, then it might ring a bell. You know, the internet these days, it's on 24 seven. You can get your news. You don't have to watch the nightly newscast, but he's making quite a name for himself. In fact, he has already Ready. He is an internet journalist who actually broke the lid off the UVA rape case. He is here today, and we're going to talk about more on that during the course of the program. In the meantime, I want you to listen to a cast of reporters from the Huffington Post talking about our guest today. Like, who is this guy? His name is Charles C. Johnson. Uh, Charles C. Johnson, who is he? 
I have no idea. He's a writer? <laughs> uh, uh, Patriot. <laughs> um, I, I've, teller. <laughs> he is a conservative journalist who has had some stories that fell apart and for that reason has had some trouble getting uh, a regular arrangement with the Daily Caller, for example. I wrote, I wrote a piece in, it might have been this year, uh, he wrote a couple of takedowns in campaigns I was covering that I thought were flimsy, and then he wrote one piece taking down David Kirkpatrick from the New York Times. Johnson basically fell for a parody story that had been run when he was a student at Princeton. <laughs> I read about that. I first interacted with him that way. I mean, and Johnson uh, is just a true believer who, after I wrote that story, told me, I think it said publicly on Twitter, so it's not, I'm not like you know, breaking confidence. He just, he has, um, uh, so, uh, he's, he's a little bit autistic and doesn't get humor. He's a little bit autistic and is incredibly obsessive about data. Yeah. He doesn't vote, he says. He just, it, for some reason, he's gotten on this tack of being a full-time investigator for causes that end up being what the Tea Party's into. Live in our studio right now is Charles C. Johnson, the man who is creating quite a stir around the nation on the Internet with his own business, including the National Press. Recently, he was featured in an article in the New York Times. He is the editor-in-chief of GotNews.com. You'll want to remember that, GotNews.com. 436-MeTV, Option 11. We're back with our guest, Charles C. Johnson, in just a moment. Stay tuned. Spinner's Record, the Valley's Classic Vinyl Headquarters, carries an inventory of over a half million classic LPs. Choose from rock, rhythm and blues, country, jazz, and oldies but goodies. Spinner's also buys and sells fully restored old school stereo gear and LP. You can now get a turntable receiver and speakers for below $250. We carry name brands like Morant, Sansui, and Pioneer. At Spinner's, we sell memories. Spinner's Records at 639 East Olive Avenue in the Tower District. Hey, we're back here on the program. Connect with me, I'm MeTV Fresno, 436, MeTV Option 11. I'm pleased to welcome in. I've heard so much about this guy. I don't know if you have, Charles C. Johnson. Gosh, welcome to the program, me. sir. Thanks All for right. having me. Good to see you. So talk about your business, gotnews.com. Um, how did it start? I know you've worked for the Wall Street sure. Journal and other major publications. You're only 26 years old. It's yes. like you're a genius at 26, man. What's going on? I wouldn't here? go that far. My wife certainly wouldn't allow that. But um, <laughs> no, I you know I started this company, uh, GotNews.com, uh, about six months ago. Uh, my view is that the, the internet is changing all of the media. And I was very excited to kind of get involved with breaking news. I'd broken a number of stories when I worked at Breitbart. I had a number of kind of stories that went viral when I worked for other people. And uh, the idea was is that I should just start my own company. And my wife said, you know, we should go do it. Borrowed some money from family and friends and uh, got started. And uh, it does now, I think, three million page views a month. Um, and it's growing all the time. Um, and it's quite, uh, it's quite interesting to, to see yourself profiled in the New York Times and Politico and all these other places. So it's quite so strange. So you've got three million followers? Well, three million people go to the website a month, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and all I've right. got about 20,000 or so on Twitter. Um, I'm the largest in the Central Valley, I think, actually. You know, I just followers. joined Twitter. I'm, you know, listen, I'm a lot older than you are. I'm not technically inclined like, like the younger generation. So I had to have my son uh, set it up. How long does it take to build a base of followers, of course, on Twitter? Well, it depends what you do. I mean, I use it to break news and I use it it's a big part of my distribution platform for my content oh, okay and so if you're just you know opining about things maybe you won't get followers as quickly but if you're constantly breaking news people get interested by it so I am you know, followed by politicians by celebrities all kinds of people really really so it's quite really? interesting. like what celebrities name a name uh, a few um, you know Larry the cable guy of uh, course yeah so Larry the cable guy <laughs> and I are friends uh, you know kind of a funny kind of thing um, I'm I think I'm followed oh, by some, Beyonce. No, uh, not no. yet. Uh, <laughs> some Ted Cruz staffers or followers of mine. Uh, really? So it's interesting, you know, with, with Twitter, <laughs> it's 140 characters and everyone's equal on Twitter. So it's a bit kind of fun. Um, so you can learn a lot about the world and you can share information. And I've met many people who actually work for me through Twitter, including um, somebody who's invested in my company. So it's quite, quite interesting. So what is the name of your company? So the company is gotnews.com. Oh, that's um, the name of it. It's the yeah. name of your website too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and so the All idea right. is that Eventually, crowdsourcing and crowdfunding of journalism is sort of kind of taking off right now. And so right now, everyone sees kind of the beta version of Got News, but I'm working on the software right now to kind of explore other kind of technology. So when I'm thinking, okay, uh, you have to understand, I'm, you're talking to a dinosaur here. So, so 
I, I mean, you said you had to borrow money from family. I mean, what does it take to start a website and, and start your own business? It can't cost that much money. Oh, can it's not it, that much. Intern, no, no, no it's not internet? that much money. And so we, we designed the website. I think the whole project was at most like $20,000. Or thirty thousand dollars for a website. For a website, yeah. And so, okay. what we want to do is have enough money in the in the kitty so that um, uh, the biggest costs are server costs. Essentially, the website's too popular at this stage. Um, oh. And the problem is that as you get more and more traffic on your site, your server costs increase. So you have to budget it out appropriately. Really? Um, and so that's what I've been trying to figure out. How do I do that? And sometimes I've had something like 14, 1,400 people a second on the website. Um, so it's wow. a lot of people, as you can imagine. And you don't want the website to slow down too much. So you have to buy more and more server space. So it's oh, um, so that's what gets costly. That's what gets costly. Yeah. So the more people that that infiltrate your website at one time, that slows it down. So you have to buy more space to speed it up. Correct. Okay. And I so get it. Um, and so you just have to budget accordingly. But sometimes you can't you can't predict how big a story you're going to have ahead of time. Yeah. So uh, we got about a minute before we got to go to break. Tell before we get into the the the, the main the main course of this whole uh, uh, topic today here on the program. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you grew up, how in the heck did somebody like you with national prominence end up in Fresno and on my show? <laughs> well, I got I got married. Um, my wife said we should move to Fresno. We lived We're in from L.A. Where? and oh, I'm from okay. I'm from Boston originally, but I moved to L.A. and my wife oh, said, "Oh, I love Beantown. We, we should move here." And so I did what my wife told me, and I can live anywhere because of the internet. And uh, I really like it here. Cost of living's great. People are friendly, um, and a uh, lot of very pro family folks here. Yeah. Um, particularly as my wife and I are planning to start our own family. So. When did you uh, move to Fresno? Oh, about seven or eight months ago, or okay. I guess in, no, in June of last year. So right. yeah. So you're from Boston, mm -hmm. right near where the Patriots are. They're in Foxborough. Yes. Okay. What do you think? Uh, got any news for us about this uh, deflate gate? <laughs> well, this is this is a funny story. I, you know, I, <laughs> I, it's really it's surprising to me because the Patriots are sort of the New York Yankees of football. Um, I people, hate them now. Pe you know that. Yeah, people love to hate them, <laughs> and I, I don't really get it because it's not like. You know, it, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. But my sense is that are it's you a snooping big, around trying to get the, get to the uh, crack this case? Or? Well, it's amazing. You know, I, I do a lot of stories based upon what my audience is interested in, uh -huh. and it's amazing how many people are interested in this story. Um, yeah, like hundreds and hundreds of people. Are you doing some snooping yourself to see what you can come up with? Or I'm looking somewhat into it, but um, it seems like it's one of those kind of social media phenomenons. It's not necessarily yeah, who, true. Who knew about it? Was it the ball boy? Was it was it Brady? Was it uh, Belichick? Uh, well, and you know, the they all know about a it. lot of Colts people were like, look, they beat us soundly and fair and square. And so it's not it's sort of one of these things that yeah. people try and are trying to do to minimize the Patriots successes. Yeah, which are considerable. You know, I lived in Boston for about a year. I went to every Red Sox game when I was there. I worked in the media. Of course, I love Fenway Park, but I'm upset that they signed Pablo away from the Giants. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here today. All right, Charles C. Johnson is our guest. You can call in at 436 Me TV Option 11. A lot of time left. 45 minutes left in the program today. Back in just a moment. Attention all units. We have reports of two yeah, motorcycle cops protecting stuff. California's highway. That's for us, good buddy. The men of chips are on MeTV. Hi, I'm John Baker. I'm John Baker. It's Officer Baker. He's the blonde one. Hi there. Officer Poncherello, man. Frank Poncherello. Well, I'm Frank Poncherello. And he's the one who's Eric Estrada. There's no way I wouldn't remember a name like that. Catch the blonde one and the one who's Eric Estrada. On now chips. on MeTV Fresno. Xfinity 187. Back here with our guest, uh, Charles C. Johnson, and I have an email question for you here. Uh, GotNews.com, is it a website or a Twitter account? Fresno has server capacity that's adequate for this or not? Oh, so I, I rent my server space. Uh, I can't remember where the company is. I think it's in Arizona, but I rent it through a third party. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, look, you can you can buy anything on the internet these days. Um, I have a Twitter account, uh, GotNews.com, at GotNews.com. I also have a uh, another Twitter account, my own, Chuck C. Johnson, and I have the website gotnews.com. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm on all platforms at this stage. <laughs> okay. Hey, I want to get to the UVA rape case, uh, sure. the alleged rape, Rolling Stone magazine, and I want to put up a, a picture of the cover of Rolling Stone. Last year, Rolling Stone magazine printed a story about a young woman named Jackie who claimed she had been gang raped by a number of students, University of Virginia. Only problem is. Did the reporter bother to contact the students themselves who allegedly uh, so were the perpetrators? If not, then why? The reporter in this case, Sabrina uh, Rubin Erdely, who decided to honor Jackie's request not to contact the man or men who orchestrated the attack. 
And the editor, Dana, uh, or Will Dana, uh, she backed her up in that decision. The magazine eventually backed off the story as the facts began crumbling right in front of the entire nation and Jackie's claims became questionable. So here comes Charles C. Johnson, yes, who decided to identify the victim as Jackie Coakley and pointed to her picture on the Facebook page of Slutwalk DC. However, the woman in question was not Coakley. Instead, it turned out to be someone named Angie Duran seen here, and Slutwalk DC issued a furious statement calling Johnson out. We would like to state with 100% uh, knowledge of the truth that his claims are unfounded, vile, and dangerous. We nor the photographer of the image gave permission of this photo to be used. Johnson says he still doesn't know uh, which photo is uh, Jackie and which one is the other woman, Angie Duran, the alleged rape victim. Full screens of the apology. Here it is from Charles C. Johnson. Yes. You can kind of read it for yourself. I consulted with two uh, photographic experts, made the judgment call based on the evidence above. In the rush to publish, I screwed up and asked for forgiveness. This is a startup and... While I've broken many stories before everyone else, I'm still human and I make mistakes. Okay. Yes. So this raises everything, uh, there, everything there pretty accurate. Um, partly. Uh, so what we did was <laughs> we, we we broke this story. We we named Jackie Coakley, okay. uh, and so lots of people were very upset about this. Right. And what we did was we pulled her Pinterest account, showing that she was obsessed with uh, talking about issues of rape, and it was quite interesting because we now know the whole story was fabricated, um, everything from top to bottom. Yeah. And she liked on her Pinterest account a photo of Slutwalk DC. We published that photo. Uh, we. We also published her comment underneath it, and it turns out the comment was correct, and she was praising Slutwalk DC, but that's not actually Jackie Coakley. And so we apologized for it. Um, and we corrected, I think, within an hour and a half, which uh, would have been sooner had I not been in the car driving uh, from uh, from Fresno to LA. But um, and so uh, yeah, I mean, we made we've made mistakes. I think our error margin though is pretty low. Um, all things considered, um, I often like, you know, the New York Times, LA Times, they have a whole page on, you know, corrections and retractions. And I think we've done now two retractions and we've done over 500 stories. So uh, or we've done, you know, corrections of that sort. So right. why has why have your mistakes been magnified more so than any others then? Well, that's a great question. I mean, you know, with um, with a, a millionth the resources of the New York Times, <laughs> I get uh, ten, tenfold. You know, it, it's a, it's an interesting kind of weird world we're living in now where people ask you to live up standards that they don't live up to themselves. And part of it's because I'm young. Part of it's because I'm, I have a swashbuckling pers persona on the Internet. Um, and people people <laughs> like... Uh, People like going after people on the internet, and uh, I'm a target because I do a lot of stories that are taboo or that, that you know, the audience is very interested in, but yet uh, the, the, the journalistic class doesn't think that they're appropriate. Uh, what hand did you have in this UVA rape case other than the photo? So what we did was we actually found out who Jackie Coakley was. So we actually went and researched. We pulled her full name. We discovered all this material about so her. So you ratted her out, who she was. Yeah, we, we exposed. Uh, so they were trying to hide who she was for a long time. The, and you exposed mm -hmm. her. Yeah, and so we found out that the whole thing was, was nonsense. It was fake. At this time, which photo is which? Do we know which oh, one is Jackie Oh, the main Coakley? one that you showed is her. Um, the first one uh, yeah, that the we first showed? one you, you showed show, is her. Show that one yeah. again. The first one. It was the first one. Mm -hmm. That's Jackie That's Coakley. Mm -hmm. So she she was never raped. She was never raped. The whole thing's a fabrication. And she actually, um, I've had Washington Post reporters, I've had a number of reporters actually compliment me and thank me for naming her so that they can do their stories. Because I basically went out on the far end of the story and, and you know, they gave them a lot of space to breathe and do their journalism. Why did uh, she make this story up? That's the question. Have you spoken to her? Uh, I have not spoken to her, but I've spoken to her friends and they've said that she's one of these girls who really wanted to be a part of a club. She really wanted to be a part of something. The campus feminist group was the group that she was a part of. Um, and people lie to be a part of clubs all the time, right? Um, this is what well, part of human nature, I guess. And she, she created this elaborate story that involved a boy that she had met many years ago and the whole thing was fake from top to bottom. Yeah, but it, here's here's the thing. The reporter Sabrina Rubin Erdley, yeah, from Erdley, the, from Erdley, 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 Erdley. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, why would she print a story like this without verification? That's the other question I have. Well, and she, is she still working for the Rolling Stone magazine? Well, that's a great question. Um, she's a contributing editor there even to this day, as far as I know. Um, but she's done a number of these types of stories where she'll try and push kind of a, a feminist agenda, a woman's push agenda. Push the envelope. Huh? Um, and, yeah, oftentimes she doesn't necessarily, she doesn't let the facts get in the way of the story. She's had other stories that are similarly fabrications. She was a contemporary, actually, of Stephen Glass, you know, the famous New Republic oh, yeah. guy who made up all idea. this stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, they went to UPenn together. 
And I, I published a lot of stuff where she says, uh, a lot of videos you can see for them yourself where Erdley's talking about her process and how she says that she, she oftentimes, uh, uh, she says that she oftentimes doesn't let the facts get in the way of the story. Um, so she's- well, she, how can we believe what Rolling Stone prints then? Well, this is a great question. I don't know that we can. Um, uh, this is gonna be a very interesting, yeah, several months for them. They published a, a, an apology. They published a, a retraction. Um, but the, the, you know, they shut down all of the UVA fraternities. There's now another alleged rape case at, at Duke. Um, part of the reason this story was published is that there's this attitude by a lot of feminists in the country that we should extend Title IX protections to essentially eliminate due process rights for men accused of rape on college campuses. Right. So there's a lot at stake here. I mean, there are a lot of young men who have been falsely accused of and the rape. Duke, the Duke uh, rape case, that's falling apart too. It already has. Yeah, well, the first one the, that happened, I think, in 07 fell apart. But there's 07 a, there's, or 08. Yeah, yeah, there's a new one now um, right. that, that, that apparently has some serious you know, problems. Well, we don't well. know if that's true. You yeah, don't know if those are false allegations too. Well, right now the evidence is showing that um, that the police don't think that there's a case there. Um, and so if the police don't think there's a case... You know. So why does this keep happening on college campuses? Duke, Part University of, the issue, of Virginia? It's a, it's a power thing. Um, a lot of campus feminists think that rape, uh, that we should immediately believe the woman who's, who's alleging rape. Um, and so they, they, what they want is they want to have the colleges basically be the administrators deciding the guilt or innocence of young men. And uh, it's creating all these problems because in a normal, you know, some guys are saying, "Hey, let's go to let's go to the court system. Like, I'll go to jail because I'm not I'm innocent of these charges." But the the college campuses a lot of the times don't listen to them and they just you know remove them from campus. Sometimes Should I warn my them. son when he goes to college? Starts. I think to it's college? something to look into. I mean, uh, wow. certainly you need to be aware that this kind of environment exists, um, particularly with the hookup culture and the alcohol that's fueling it. Yeah. All right. Gotnews.com is the website. Our guest today is Charles C. Johnson, the one and only. He is here, live and in the flesh. 436 Mean TV Option 11. We're back in just a moment. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Back here on the program, you can join us at 436 Me TV Option 11. Uh, Charles C. Johnson, editor in chief of GotNews.com. Another email question before going to public or going public with a story: How do you verify newsworthy events to avoid misfires and inaccuracies? We kind of touched Mo on it before. Well, most of the time, we actually just do like a quick lead. We have a snappy headline and just the evidence, the document, the video, whatever it is that supports the claim of the lead. So oftentimes it's self-explanatory. Um, but we have a team of you know, researchers, uh, a number of people work for me um, who help me on things, and other people are amateur researcher people. Other people are in law enforcement. And so we have a whole team that kind of vets things. So it's, um, and we're building that capacity up all the time. All right, next one. I want to get to the Ebola cases. And sure. uh, those uh, took place last year, as you know, um, made world news, were, made news around the world, including specifically in this country, because we had a couple of cases, a couple of people, or two, two or three people actually come down with Ebola last year here uh, in the U.S., down in Texas. I want to show a picture of one of the nurses that contracted Ebola, suspended twice by uh, Twitter, the second time was for tweeting out the name of Nina Pham. I'm talking about our guest today, Charles C. Johnson. She is the nurse who became infected with the Ebola virus. She was infected after taking care of Thomas Eric Duncan, who died. Johnson's response was, this censorship is part of a well-orchestrated smear campaign against independent journalists led by lefty trolls who don't want Americans to know the truth. Most news outlets had Pham's name, but held back in reporting it, except for Johnson. He released it. He broke the case. Hey, the other nurse in question that got Ebola, let's put her picture up, too. It's Amber Vincent, but the nurse in question was Nina Pham. You broke it. You released her name yeah. before anyone else. Why? Well, it was 12 hours before anybody else, and... Um I think it's really important to see a face of the person who gets sick. So we're all hearing, oh, there was a nurse who was infected. Well, who is this nurse? What is she like? What does she like to do? I mean, who is she as a person? Um, you know, Nina, Nina Pham and I think, are, I think we're about the same age. My, my wife um, is an Asian American. Um, my sister-in-law is a nurse around the same age as Nina Pham. So I, I was fascinated in who this girl was. And so we researched her, put out some information about her. 
Um, and it led to this GoFundMe effort where all these people poured money in to help her out. How'd you find um, her name? One of the ways we did was we wrote a little code. We, um, what we discovered is we discovered, we had this, um, this program that essentially told us where all of the hazmat people were going. And so what happened was, is we took mm. the entire, all of where the hazmats were going in the Dallas area, and we took that database and we compared it against uh, all of the registered nurses in, those, in that geographic coordinates. And we, we got a, a series of leads and then pursued really? them. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it took all of about an hour and a half, I think, to, to finally prove it. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, I've got to say that <laughs> w w when the hunt is on for the information, that's when I'm uh, happiest when I do my work. Um, so that, that was a lot of fun. And we got that story. We broke it 12 hours before everyone else. Um, were, were, I ended were, up getting like 400,000 people that day on the website. Um, and uh, it went just totally crazy and Other viral. media outlets, were they upset at you for doing that? Yes, many were upset. Many, like who? Uh, New York Times? Uh, well, the Dallas News was upset with me. Um, but I had, I had so many people in the Dallas area call me, like find my number, call me, thank me. People who lived down the street from them, they wanted to know, like, there's a communicable disease in my area. We should know this, you know, this, uh, we should know that this is going on. Um, and so, uh, you know, it became a huge story. Let me ask you something. Uh, do you have people on the ground like this, like this Ebola case? Do you have informants on the ground at the scene of, say, a story that you're working on? Sometimes. You, you so, so one of, sometimes I'll pay an informant. Sometimes I'll have people who just want to help. Um, my business partner is a guy, is a former New York City police officer who started his own business later on, and so we get a lot of stuff from cops before they go out to the wider public. So we sort of have listening posts all throughout the country, <laughs> um, and there's all sorts of interesting stuff that you learn really quickly. Um, do you pay topics. for information? On occasion, yeah. I mean, it depends. Um, it depends on the quality of the information, the quality of the informant. But um, you know, the and you don't have a problem with doing that. No, I mean, the Daily Mail does it. It's a long tradition. Actually, Ben Franklin did it back in the day. Um, <laughs> it's good enough for Ben. It's good enough for me. Um, so there's a long history of, of kind of checkbook journalism. Oprah does it. Um, Frost Nixon tapes, of course, are a famous example of it. Uh, part of the reason we don't do it is because the Columbia Journalism School says we shouldn't do it. But you know who made them the boss of journalism? Do you have any story in mind, like maybe the Ebola case or or, or any of these cases, like like the UV rape case? Do you do you have any regrets about what you do? No, not really. I mean, um, I I wish I could do more stories. Um, my major regret is that I don't yet have the resources to build the company into what it should be. Um, but I'll get there. I mean, I'm 26. Um, you know, uh, is I, anything off the table? Well, I mean, there's uh, everything on the all hands on deck, right? And nothing uh, is off the table. I think journalists are based. A lot of journalists in this country are, are stenographers for powerful people. They often just repeat cor what corporate interests think or political interests think. And my attitude is like, we should just give the people the truth, let them make their own decisions. And they sometimes they can be angry with us for revealing this information. Some but people were very too mad. Intrusive? I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting question. I, I don't. I haven't yet gotten to a point where I'm like the public shouldn't know this. I don't really believe in those terms yet. Um, I think more often than not, my my inclination is to hit publish. All right, caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Um, yes. Are there items that he would, wouldn't pub, publish? Uh, how far will he go in publishing? I mean, you know, is, is certain names okay to give? Other names aren't because of the circumstances. I'll take the question off here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So, so, I think so it's how similar... far are you willing to go? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I want the truth to be out there and to let the public make the decision. So, like, for instance, with the Jackie Coakley story, I published her name already knowing that the whole story was fake. And I knew that the media would go and say, I outed a rape victim. I'm a terrible person. But I knew that events would basically show me to be correct. So a lot of the times I'm undermining the credibility of the competition um, because they have to write hit pieces against me. I have to be sort of the bad boy of journalism or I have to be a villain. I mean, I'm sure you've seen the, the pieces out there about me that are um, oftentimes very contemptuous. Um, I read the New York Times article. We'll yeah. get into that later in the show. Sure. But uh, that, that was kind of a hit piece, wasn't it, a little bit? Yeah, but you know, the thing is, is that Andy Warhol once had this, this thing about how he doesn't really read his criticism. He just measures it by inches, the amount of inches he gets. Um, <laughs> and, you know, at a certain point, you know, you, you're not really responsible for the reactions people have to things. You can do the very best you can. So long as you have truth as your standard, I think the public really appreciates that and likes that. So as long um, as you're going after the truth, uh, nothing else matters. No, I mean, this is what this is sort of the charge. Um, if you're if you're trying to spin information to see people, first of all, I don't think it works in this day and age. I mean, everyone's on the internet now. Everyone's debunking things and researching things. We just debunked a NAACP 
a hoax where somebody at the NAACP claimed that there was a bombing in Colorado. It uh, turns out to have, you know, the, the, that there was a burning that had already happened there and it wasn't related to anything racist. Um, yeah. So it's that kind of thing that we like to expose. All right, we got to take a break here on Connect With Me, 436, MeTV, Option 11. And uh, Charles C. Johnson is our guest. Uh, GotNews.com is the website if you want to go there and get the latest news on whatever is going on out there that's the hot topic. This guy's on the, ca he's on the caper, my friends. Back with our show in just a moment. Spinners, you know what I like? the Valley's classic vinyl headquarters, carries an inventory of over a half million classic LPs. Choose from rock, rhythm and blues, country, jazz, and oldies but goodies. Spinners also buys and sells fully restored old school stereo gear and LP. You can now get a turntable receiver and speakers for below two hundred fifty dollars. We carry name brands like Morant, Sansui, and Pioneer. At Spinners, we sell memories. Spinners Records at six thirty nine East Olive Avenue in the Tower District. This fall, there is a place, familiar and inviting, timeless and warm. Me TV, a place all your own that you can call home. Hi, honey, I'm home. This fall, home is where you'll find me. You mean to tell me that's all there is to it? That's all. Me TV, Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. You know, I've got to tell you, my friends, uh, my heart has been broken and very sad and, and actually kind of depressed a little bit the last few days just knowing that this little girl, Janessa Ramirez, was shot and killed, nine years old, near Marks and Clinton. She was there on Sunday night about 9 o'clock with her mother, Stacy Ramirez. They were going to go cash in some lottery tickets. These gangbangers, and I call them thugs, I call them cowards, I call them punks. And usually I don't use words like that on this program, but that's exactly what they are. She was hit by a stray bullet that traveled some 300 yards. Police are on the lookout. Uh, you can call Crime Stoppers at 498-STOP. That is their number, or 621-2000. They are still looking for the assailants at this time. And this is Thursday, so some four days later, there is little Janessa, nine years old, Steinbeck Elementary, fourth grade student out there, a great student, a great kid. What a smile, my God. Um, we're going to try to talk to her father here on this program tomorrow. Anyway, uh, for the most part, um, Stacy Ramirez, uh, her mom, spoke to KMPH uh, Fox 26 News and other news outlets as well the last couple of days. Here is Janessa's mom, Stacy. Um, we stopped to um, cash in lottery tickets because me and Janessa said that the store had like lucky ones and winners. And she goes, Mommy, you're going to win tonight big. It's going to be a good night. I go, OK. So I run in the store, get the tickets. And I ran into her little friend. She goes, is that Nessa in the car? I go, yeah. He goes, can we say hi? I go, yeah. And he said hi. And he goes, my mom wants to say hi. I go, all right, come on, Janessa, get out of the car. So I go, lock up, and then give me my keys. While walking over, she goes, uh oh, I locked the keys in the car. I'm like, Janessa. Mm -hmm. So I called my mom, and she's like, I'll be there in 20 minutes. And then we walked over, said hi to the friend. The friend hugged her, and then within like few minutes, we heard pop, pop, pop. And I go, what was that? And Janessa goes, sounds like firecrackers. People are crazy. I go, yeah. And then within two minutes, she just fell to the ground, and she started screaming, my back, my back, my stomach's on fire, Mom, I'm hurting. And I fell to her, and I'm a medical assistant, so I started giving her little, like, compressions, trying to help her. And she said, I love you, and she was gone. She was gone. She said that right here, like yeah. right, right here? She held my hand, and I love you, and just closed her eyes and was gone. And I tried to shake her and bring her back, and she didn't. And then I said, they... That's all. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so this so th this happened so quickly for I you. I mean, a blink of an eye. I mean, a, a hug, and I mean, within like just bam. I was just like, this real? What's going on? You know, wow. I didn't understand it. <laughs> now, did just the fact that like this, you know, the police are saying what happened just about 300 yards yeah, away that's from here. Shocks me. I mean, 300 yards, really? I mean, wow. Then that just shows. Yeah, bullets don't have a name, and they fly. They fly. It's ugly. And how do you feel about that? Like, the police are saying this was gang violence that happened to yeah, that, like that happened gang. down there. It's like, well, I know I'm not a gang member. I know Janessa, but it's like, really? I mean, why have gangs? What? Why? What is the purpose of a gang? You know, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And can you just tell us, like, I know this has been tough for like the last 48 hours. Can you just tell us, like, how the family's been coping with this, or just trying to you know, be, trying to heal? Christian people, so we have a really big, big faith in God. So we know Janessa's at peace. She's in heaven. You know, she's done fighting. You know, she doesn't have to deal with any of the ugliness anymore. You know, and I always knew something was special about my daughter because just the way she was, I knew she knew something was in a, her life wasn't going to be forever. Because she would make little comments. You know, mom. You know, life's not forever. And I said, so you're nine. You don't know. You're going to live forever. We're going to have a big wedding for you. She's like, I don't want to get married. And I don't want all these things. And I don't want to want kids. I just want to be me. And that's all it's going to be. And I'm like, I go, but I want to be a grandma. She goes, no. <laughs> so, I mean, she knows. She yeah. knew her little life wasn't going to be forever. I don't even know what to say after that. I mean, I didn't. Uh... <laughs> it's pretty tragic stuff. Oh, man. Do you have any comments? <laughs> just that. I mean, I hope those people, you know, I hope, I hope whatever's done to them is severe and, and harsh to those gangbangers. Um, fortunately, this state still has the death penalty. But yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's hard to um, <laughs> try to hold it together here, but, uh, I mean, that, that just breaks your heart. I, I, I don't know how you crack a case like, case like this uh, if you're the police department. I know they're searching through and scouring through hours of videotape, like some 20 or 28 video uh, tapes uh, right now uh, taken by businesses in and around the area. But uh, your heart just breaks when you, when, you, when you see something like that. I have two children of my own. Uh, you don't have kids yet. Unfortunately, but. no. Um, no, I mean, w what I would recommend to the authorities if they were to do this is to put as much of it as they can online because you'll, you'll find that with a yeah. lot of these types of cases, you'll get people who are very, very expert in finding things. Um, my, uh, my business partner, as I mentioned earlier, was a former NYPD guy, and he routinely was good at getting gangbangers to turn on each other. I think that's probably the most likely way you're going to find the answer to this. Um, Have police go over and shake yeah. some trees, and maybe some, some fruit will fall yeah. down? Basically, yeah. Yeah, put some pressure on them. And, that would be uh, the most... You know, it's not going to bring Janessa back, but you want justice for her. Uh, this was just, uh, and it's just to hear the mother talk about her daughter, and uh, telling her mom that life isn't forever, I mean, coming from a nine-year-old, it, it's almost as if she knew, uh, had a premonition about something. I don't know. It's kind of weird to hear that. Maybe. I mean, you, you, never, you never quite know. People always look back at conversations and impart meaning to them that might have just been casual conversations, you know. Um, yeah. It's difficult to say. Yeah. You are familiar with cases like this because they happen unfortunately every day across this country. A child, uh, a teenager is shot and killed. You know about the violence in Chicago. Sure. It's, it's rampant. You know, do you cover stories of this nature or do you try to stay away from them? Is, 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 is your no, news we, mainly political? Or? No, we, we, we've worked on the Jessica Chambers case, which was a grisly kind of murder in um, in uh, Mississippi, I mean, we do work on these types of cases. We work on, we've worked on the Michael Brown case and the Eric Gardner case. Um, you know, it's it's difficult to do these types of stories because there's such high levels of emotion, and oftentimes that emotion uh, makes it difficult to actually uncover the facts. And I like to just present people the facts, and it's difficult yeah. sometimes because you really have a human reaction to these kinds of things, but you also you have to be dispassionate sometimes as a journalist, so it's tricky. Yeah, it's, it's a very hard, difficult though, to keep to it be. together with a story like this and involving a nine-year-old girl. It's not like, you know, a forty. I mean, every life is precious, but this girl hadn't lived her life yet, and to have a girl die in her mom's arms, uh, tough to handle that for anybody. I don't care who no, it's it is. Difficult. It's difficult to watch. Yeah, it so really is. Watch. Hey, I uh, hadn't planned this, but let's take a break and kind of regroup here. You're watching Connect with me. Charles C. Johnson is our guest today, GotNews.com. We're back with uh, some of your comments, your email questions, and phone calls in just a moment. Spinner's Record, the Valley's Classic Vinyl Headquarters, carries an inventory of over a half million classic LPs. Choose from rock, rhythm and blues, country, jazz, and oldies but goodies. Spinner's also buys and sells fully restored old school stereo gear and LP. You can now get a turntable receiver and speakers for below $250. We carry name brands like Morant, Sansui, and Pioneer. At Spinner's, we sell memories. Spinner's Records at 639 East Olive Avenue in the Tower District. It's almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent and Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. 
It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and television the me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Hey, back here with Charles C. Johnson, the editor-in-chief of uh, GotNews.com. Here's an email question for you. Interesting. Uh, do your sources confirm the guilt of Bill Cosby? No, so this is a really interesting one. Um, I get all kinds of stuff on the Bill Cosby stuff. <laughs> I honestly don't know at this stage. Um, several of the cases, several of the, the women claiming it, I know are, are fabrications. Um, but I haven't gone through all of them yet. Um, I've gone through about three. I think they're like 30 now at this stage. Um, and three of them I know to be fake. So I don't know that they're all fake. Um, obviously one is too, one too many, um, but uh, a lot of information that we've seen suggests that this was a different time in the 70s. I mean, people were putting things in drinks, people were partying and doing drugs. So it's difficult to say. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very skeptical though about the efforts where people are just trying to convict him in the media. I think it's kind of, it's grotesque in a certain sense, but um, if he's done it, if he did what they said he did, I hope he, you know, he's punished for it. But I, I'm very skeptical about some of the women coming forward at this stage. Yeah, are you skeptical of all of them or just some of just them? Just some of them at this stage. Just the ones I've looked into have, um, uh, have been problematic. Just the timing of events, um, the details that they've given. Um, some of them are, are questionable. And I know yeah. other journalists have looked at it as well and come to the same conclusions about the same women that I've looked at. It was a way of life back in the 60s and 70s for the most part. I know because I lived the 60s and 70s. Not that it was the right thing to do, but it was almost like, oh yeah, okay, you drugged me or, or you put something in my drink and we had some fun last night. You know, it was kind of, you know, people took it for granted more so than today. So does that, if that's the case, does it make it acceptable? No, I don't know. I mean, see, there's this question of like changing, evolving norms that we have in our society that are really difficult to deal with because we, we've changed a lot and you know just in the last I mean just since the internet has been around I mean if yeah. you look at like questions of you know of gay rights or gay issues in my lifetime alone it went from gay marriage being a strange thing in my native state of Massachusetts to being legal, you know, legal almost you know <laughs> a lot of the places in the country yeah. um, and that happened that happened rather relatively quickly in like an 11 year period so human beings are changing a lot and sometimes we shouldn't try and convict people I think off of standards in the past okay let's talk about the uh, leaked police records now and sure. I want to talk about the Michael Brown case Garner and all the rest let's put Michael Brown's picture up on the screen here uh, read on the internet don't know if it's true that you uncovered some kind of a previous record involving Michael Brown that had to do with second degree murder? Was Correct, it a charge yeah. or a conviction? So he was uh, charged with it. We had two sources, two police sources in the uh, St. Louis area. Okay. I sued to get those records. Um, we we're appealing it oh, all really? the way to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Um, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch actually joined my suit, um, which was kind of interesting to have new media and old media team up. Um, but uh, yeah, we fought this case. Uh, we continue to fight this case. Um, to this day. To this day. Um, uh, whether or not this Supreme Court of Missouri takes the case. There's actually a very similar case of a white juvenile who stole cigarettes, who was killed by a security guard. And the government said um, in Missouri, they said, uh, absolutely, you have the right to um, to see the, the juvenile conviction records. The state of, uh, of uh, Missouri didn't give us a reason. They just keep rejecting our appeal. Why? Um, they won't say why. So that's why we continue to sue. Okay. Is the ch do you know if the charge is true or not? I believe my source is on it. Um, I do know that Michael Brown's family members were in a gang. I do know that um, he chose to go to one of the most violent schools in the state of Missouri. I think it's the second most violent school. He, uh, we also published his Instagram account. We published all these Twitter accounts where he talked about beating people up and dealing drugs and, um, and harming people. Um, so at this, at this point in time, you don't know if the charge of second degree murder with Michael Brown, whether no. or not he was charged with that, you don't know if that's true yet. Well, we know, here's what we know about this. So we know that um, in this particular case, there was a St. Louis police officer officer who told us about this it was confirmed by a DEA guy in St. Louis and what they said was was that he was in a car in which a gang shooting had occurred mm -hmm. and usually what happens there is they they try and get the whole car they try and bust the whole car um, but oftentimes what they'll do is they'll have whoever if you're a younger member of the gang they'll use you to flip on somebody else and that's what it, that's what our sources tell us there we don't know the answer the government refuses to give us an answer on it why is that pertinent why is that important well because it gets to the question of like who were these people beforehand I've been in favor of releasing everything about Darren Wilson I continue to be in favor of it the AC 
ACLU was actually suing to reveal a lot of material about Darren Wilson's record. Turns out it was essentially a clean record. Um, and I'm in favor of that. I, I think basically the, the public should should know who these two guys were to give, get a sense of what, what actually transpired on that day. Turns out everything that I was told by my police sources about what actually happened with the shooting, all of that came out to be true. Um, uh, I also pointed out that the people who created the hands up, don't shoot me more Black Panthers, um, which was also revealed. Um, many of the people that Anderson Cooper and others were using as sources um, were convicted felons or liars of one sort or another. And so it was a really kind of um, important moment for the site of Got News because we were really busting the fraudulent narratives that were forming around this. And obviously it's tragic when Michael Brown dies, um, but I would love to see, you know, um, Janessa, you know, Gonzalez get a bit more attention than the Michael Browns of the world. Um, have you been threatened with any lawsuits regarding the release of uh, Michael Brown's no, uh, records? No, I mean, um, no? you know, every week. Or have you received any threats of any kind from the Brown family? Oh, I mean, anybody? no, no, I mean, um, not from the Browns, but I have had death threats. I've had people threaten to firebomb my home. Um, uh, for all sorts of different stories. Because of the Michael Brown situation? Not just the Michael Brown one. They don't like my journalistic work. Um, uh -huh. Sometimes they're non-specific as to why. Um, there are some militant people who are against my work on the Jackie Coakley thing we talked about earlier. Sure. Um, and yeah, it does bother me. I mean, I am a Second Amendment owner. And my wife is a better shot than I am. Um, but um, <laughs> uh, I think it's I think it's important to do this kind of work. One of my heroes is this guy, Elijah Lovejoy, who was um, who was an abolitionist against uh, obviously against slavery and he was killed defending his press um you know i think it's i don't I, i've had my wife is from a third world country i don't want to live in a country that that um doesn't have journalists doing the very best job they can all right let's talk about eric garner put his uh, picture up on the screen i think i read correctly on the internet that you you said that eric garner was not killed by a chokehold. Correct, yeah. So um, I, I personally don't believe that. I think it was a chokehold. I've seen the video like a thousand and one times. Sure. You've probably seen it a oh, million I've times. I've seen it, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the man in question was Daniel Pantaleo, uh, the police officer who applied what I think was a chokehold. How can you not think that was a chokehold? I mean, the oh, well, medical, I mean, here's the here. autopsy was released. It said well, no, he there died. There were two definitely. One is the there were two things that were released. The autopsy that was released said he actually died of a heart attack. He died in the um, was that the medical the examiner mm -hmm. or the coroner, which is an elected position, okay. um, which got started getting a lot of pressure, said that a chokehold, contusions on the neck may have played a role in it. The media then interpreted that as a chokehold and chokeholds are banned under New York law. Now, what's interesting about this is you can hear him actually in the video. I mean, it's a grisly video, um, but you can hear him in the video where he's screaming. And the thing is, if you apply a chokehold properly, the person just goes to sleep. They can't scream because their vocal cords are cut. But you saw you saw Pantaleo put his forearm under the chin. Right. It's a headlock, and he removed him down. It was but a, a headlock takedown. is up here. Mostly. No, no, no. It's down usually down on the neck. But um, if it's but if it's here, he's going to cut off the air supply. He didn't cut off the air supply. He just uh, closed it. What happened was is that Eric Garner was um, he was running basically a crime syndicate in the area. Um, he had had many interactions with the police. Um, he'd had a number of assaults. Um, we got his records. We put, the, put those online. Um, he was well known to the, to the police. He wasn't just sort of this like low-level street. So you criminal. think what the national press has been reporting? You think what the what the examiner, what the coroner put out? You think you're right, and you think the national? Oh, I don't. I don't think I'm right. I mean, I know I'm right. Um, and uh, and okay. the evidence in the court cases that were released, some of the material that's been released. I mean, I put it all online. People can right. see for themselves. Um, the problem is that the media oftentimes they hear contusions on the neck and they think chokehold. When like he was a very he was as you could see he's a very large man he was out of shape he had um he had a number of medical complications from other things and he did die I mean the the autopsy report and the coroner said that he died of uh, and the final analysis died of a heart attack in the um, uh, now it was extremely stressful being arrested no doubt I mean um, and obviously but the reason a lot of people said chokehold initially is because they wanted to convict this police officer and. Uh, for an illegal act, and it doesn't look like that was actually what actually happened. Okay, move on now. Let's talk sure. about Darren Wilson, and I want to put his picture up on the screen. New York Times recently did a full-blown story on you. Uh, some say it might have been a hit piece. They claim you leaked the home addresses of two New York Times journalists after uh, one of them had released the home address of Darren Wilson, the officer who shot and killed Michael Brown. Yes. But actually, uh, the New York Times reporter at that at that point released the the name of the street where brown was on not his specific yeah. address well there are eight there, i think there are eight houses on the street or maybe six i can't remember off the top of my yeah, head there, but, there are um, not very many on the street um, there. but um no what i did was i i said that, that they essentially had painted a, a a a map to his door and the new york times is the paper of record i was extremely critical of this i said to uh to the reporter in question julie bossman i said why did you do this um 
Uh, David Carr, who wrote the profile piece in the New York Times, said, well, you know, other publications had done it, had did it too. Um, Washington Post reporter did it. Uh, CNN reporter actually went to Brown's or to uh, to Darren Wilson's home. Mm-hmm. Um, as opposed to all of that, I think uh, law enforcement. Those of us who've had death threats, um, when you've had that experience, uh, and there are many people who are offering a bounty to kill Darren Wilson and to mm-hmm. kill his wife, his pregnant wife. Um, when you've had that experience, uh, the media should be extremely careful about revealing where somebody actually lives. But you released the the names and addresses of two New York Times Correct, reporters yeah. that had nothing to do. No, no, with no, the they Darren. did. They did. They did. They wrote the story. Yeah, they are the ones who wrote the, the story. The Times mm-hmm. claims that they didn't. No, no, they did. Uh, I think you're mistaken on that. Um, okay. Campbell Robertson, uh, who is based in Louisiana, right, right, and Julie right. Bossman, who's based in Chicago. But why did you release their names and addresses? Because I wanted to send a message to the media that it's not appropriate to do this kind of you know story. The the story that they wrote was essentially something about how Darren Wilson had just gotten married. It was like a gossipy piece. Um, I also checked with law enforcement sources, as I mentioned before, my business yep, partner yep. is a NYPD guy. Yep. Um, I checked with people in Chicago and Louisiana to make sure that they were protected before I did this. Um, and in both cases, I wanted to sh- send a message to the larger media that this kind of um, harassment of police officers is, is not appropriate. Um, and I think the message was received because Julie Bossman essentially um, you know, uh, uh, th- th- there was essentially an apology for it, um, that she, she sort of stepped out, she absented herself from the public eye for a while. Um, a lot of journalists actually agreed with me. They said this is the appropriate recourse, including some of the Times, though whether or not they would go on record is, uh, they, a lot of them refused to go on record. They yeah, imagine if we gave them the names and the phone numbers and the addresses of those officers who were involved in, 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 in police shootings across the country. I mean, what kind of a society would we live in? Well, there are many, people, mean, who, there are many people who defend doing that. Uh, I think it's inappropriate. Yeah, I mean... Um, I think it's inappropriate, too. I think it's... I mean, I honestly think if you, you, know, if you post somebody's address and somebody's trying to kill them, um, and this is not like sort of trying to kill them. I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds of threats um, I've read some of these threats against Darren Wilson and his wife. Um, I understand. I mean, I've read some of yeah. them, too. Yeah, They're pretty disturbing stuff, pretty graphic about what they intend to do. All right, Charles C. Johnson is here. He is the editor-in-chief, a good man, glad he's here today, of GotNews.com, and we're going to continue our conversation here in just a moment. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. A top secret location. It's the spies who love me, bringing together MeTV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're dairy. That's right. Free. Now what are we going to do? The best we can. Suave. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. Me TV Fresno. Channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Hey, go to the website. Uh, it's called GotNews.com with Charles C. Johnson, the editor-in-chief. We're glad he's here today. That's the website. If you go on there now, you'll see a story about the TSA. I want to roll a videotape, and then we'll talk to Charles about it here uh, in a moment. You're claiming on your website, my friend, that the illegal immigrants can now board airplanes with California driver's licenses despite repeated guarantees. To the contrary, a whistleblower from the TSA has turned over documents to GotNews.com that contradicts media reports that illegal immigrants may not travel within the U.S. with a California driver's license. What's going on here? So essentially, uh, we've been uh, led astray by the DMV, and we've been led astray by the L.A. Times and a number of other media outlets who say essentially that um, the driver's licenses that we provided to all these illegal immigrants um, in the state of California, uh, essentially they can be used to travel within the state um, and within the country but as well. they large. shouldn't be. No, it's, it's illegal. They're not supposed to be able to do that. Right. Um, but TSA has essentially said that they're going to interpret the law the way they want to, um, and they're going to allow them to travel. Um, so it's the feds saying that the state law, you know, the states, the state law basically says, oh, you're not allowed to travel without, um, and the feds say, no, no, we're going to allow it. Um, and so that raises all sorts of interesting uh, questions as, you know, the 9-11 hijackers, a number of other yeah. um, terrorists, uh, you know, got in with uh, fraudulent documentation. 
And the whistleblower, who is a TSA officer, who's a good, who's a good friend of mine, um, who's since become a good friend of mine, actually, um, turned over all these documents, and I vetted them, and they're all, everything you say is true. They're on the true. website. Mm -hmm. They're on the you website. For I saw, yeah, I saw it for myself last night. Interesting stuff. Caller, go ahead. You're on the line with uh, Charles uh, C. Johnson. Go ahead. Uh, Charles, a real uh, quick question here. Uh, do you think because you're white, do you get a bad rap when you make a good story and let's say an African American shooting or killing whatever and uh, and they don't like what you wrote they'll come at you every way they can and my feeling is that what it is you know uh, too many reporters are afraid to put or tell the truth the way they should be written and you know uh, I know you could probably yeah. get threats and all that but I think it's more an issue that because you're white and let's say uh, an African American got killed, and they didn't like the story. They'll, they'll come right. at you any way they can. So that, Good. that's my question. Good question. Thank you very much, caller. Does race enter into it? Oh well, I mean, there are all kinds of things that people say about me. They attack my hair color. They attack the fact that I have glasses. That I'm kind of fat. <laughs> um, that I married. Fat. Well, this is what they say. Uh, <laughs> that I've married an Asian American woman. Um, what does that got to do with anything? They say it was anything? a mail order bride. Well, it doesn't. It has nothing to do with anything. But people just people <laughs> want to attack you because it's the internet and they can and they can get away with it. And so, you know, they make things They're up insults. about you. No, yeah, they're, they're schoolyard things. Um, uh, I'm more interested when people are like, that's false, which you've reported as wrong. And then I take them seriously because, yeah. because if they're right, I have to do a correction. But more often than not, it's just um, a lot of people don't like that I'm young. I mean, there are all sorts of things that people say. Hey, we've only got three minutes left. The new sure. licenses, getting back to the TSA, new driver's licenses for the undocumented workers look the same, but there's one exception. The top right-hand corner says federal limits apply. What does that mean? So essentially that means that you're not supposed to be able to travel on a plane and you can't use it for federal ID purposes. So when you deal okay. with the federal government. But um, TSA has said, no, we're going to listen to, we're going to ignore that that limit. Okay, I want to. this is the, the article that I took from the New York Times, and it's right here. You can read it online. I want to take a couple of quotes on here and get your comment. Um, let's see. The New York Times says, After watching him set off a series of small mushroom clouds, it struck me that he might be the ultimate, uh, uh, ultimate expression of a certain kind of citizen journalist or journalism, uh, one far more toxic than we're accustomed to seeing. Uh, what do you think the writer was talking about in that? So well, I've been you called create a create this toxic environment across the nation and on the internet. I Is mean, so I've saying? been so I've been accused. I mean, I think he compared me to the uh, creature from Ghostbusters. I was compared to Darth Vader in Politica, which is kind of cool. Like, I've got to be honest. Um, no, I mean, look, these are kind of the name calling that you would expect. I mean, I'm I'm challenging a kind of industry. I'm trying to change it, and um, some of the things they say are deeply personal and nasty, but. Um, no, I mean I'm I'm having a great time. I, I you know you've interviewed me. I don't may, don't have horns as you can as your viewers can Mr. see. Mr. Johnson shares some common characteristics with the so-called mood slime in Ghostbusters 2, which lived underneath New York City and gathered strength by feeding on the anger, uh, cr uh, cursing through the uh, streets above it. So that's that's the reference to Ghostbusters in that yes. New York Times article. So this is the paper of record, all the news that's fit to print, and they're... Um, <laughs> Sounds like a commentary. Yeah, it's just interesting. Um, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, honestly, like, there are all kinds of things that you read about yourself, and my wife, I'm like, don't read this stuff, honey, like, or, you know, my mother-in-law. Um, but uh, it's amazing the kind of negativity you get, but also the kind of praise. I mean, I, I got so many articles from people who were falsely accused of rape after I did the UVA story right. that um, it kind of made a lot of the negative stuff worth it. Another quote here says, Mr. Johnson is prone to narcissism, not uncommon in media types, but has his own special brand of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, and isn't that amazing? Um, this, I can't believe this came from the New York Times. Well, it is a commentary piece in fairness, yeah. but um, you know, they say that I'm narcissistic. The guy who wrote this piece is David Carr, who's who's a convicted right. crack you know, addict. Um, I know David. And, I don't know him personally, but yeah, I know but, he um, is. So, you know, this is, who, this is what he is, and he's accusing me of being a narcissist. I mean, there oh. are lots of people who are narcissistic. We're going to get cut off. They're giving me the rap sure. here. But uh, Charles, would you come back? Of course. Yeah, I'd anytime. love to have you as a Thank regular guest me. here. Yeah, All right. Happy to do it. All right. Um, Editor-in-chief of GotNews.com, Charles C. Johnson. Tomorrow, another special program. Perhaps we're going to try to get the father of Janessa Ramirez. We're back tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.